here and let's hope it's working. How do I know if it's recording, Laurie? It should, it should be red. You start white and then it goes red. It's or when you click. I'm not seeing that at all, but it's... It, it shows on our end that it's recording. Awesome. Yep. Thanks, I Sandy. You now. Thank you. Wonderful. Well, for now, I'm not going to mute you. Anyways, I do want to, for those of you who aren't familiar with you, just do a brief introduction. My name is Sarah, and I'm from the Fox Valley in um, Wisconsin. I've been in for a little over 21 years. Took me five years to sign, and this is the best thing I've ever done. And one of the things I have to say is that a huge shout out to the other directors who are doing this with me and to everybody who's part of Pampered Chef. It's one of the things I love about Pampered Chef is that everybody is so willing to share. This program that we're sharing with you is from a gal named Jennifer and I know other people have referred to Jennifer. It's, it's her baby and she's so generous to let us use it and we're all doing it with each other. So Thanks to the other directors for helping out, and thanks to all of you for participating. Um, anyways, so we are in week four. You have um, had three weeks. Those of you, like Lori and um, Jenny, who know me and love me, know I cannot sing, so I'm definitely not going to try <laughs> to sing, but wahoo, you're halfway there. Um, we're not living on a prayer. We're doing what needs to be done and getting it done. Now, granted, prayers never hurt any of us, does it? No. Um, anyways, so far in this program, uh, you have learned how to increase your product knowledge in order to maximize your sales and to maximize your bookings. You've learned that your belief um, is what decide uh, blah, blah, blah. you've learned that your belief decides what you can and cannot do I was a teacher for 33 years and I always told my class you need to tell yourself you can because whether you think you can or you think you can't you're absolutely right and you know so just be the little in engine that could and keep saying I think I can I think I can and you'll be able to retrain your brain um, you've learned how to talk to people when you're out and about in your community and how to book parties at your shows um, and also the words to say at both of those I think that's what people like the most is getting the words to say and how to do it you've learned that your passion will shine through and can completely influence your your purchases at your shows as well as the bookings you've learned you have to have um, you have to coast coach effectively to keep your sales high, your bookings at every party, and a constant pool of leads. Amy did an absolutely amazing job with host coaching two weeks ago. Oh my gosh, I just got so many ideas. You've learned that your skill will make a huge difference in every party. When you know your product, you can sell your product. Study that catalog, as Amy says. Oh my gosh, you can learn so much from the catalog. When you know what to say, you know how to respond to objections and turn maybes, either with shows or potential team members, into yeses. When you tweak your host coaching skills, you have much bigger parties with much better results. And host coaching is where you earn your paycheck. And at the party, it's where you get to pick it up. Amen, sister. Yep. So now here is where you have a chance to participate. Um, do you have any questions about our wonderful host coaching call with Amy from two weeks ago? Have any of you made your video to help with coaching your hosts yet? No. No. Mm -hmm. No, sorry, no. I've done a welcome video though, and and that wasn't as terrible as it seemed like it might be. Awesome, awesome. And you know, I I think trying new things, and ladies, I think we only have ladies on here. I know that's one of the bad things we do with Pampered Chef is we always say ladies when there are gentlemen around. But uh, you know, 
just because I've been in 21 years doesn't mean it's any easier for me. So I will confess <laughs> I've not made a video either yet. So, but I, I'm going to, I know I have to. I was scared yesterday. I felt like an idiot at the Cubs Brewers game making a video and I haven't even listened to it. That's how bad I am. So is it, are you not making the video because you're scared to? Kathy's shaking her head, yes. It's just awkward. Yeah. Has anybody made their video? I know, I know Brenda has made videos of herself doing some recipe demos, which I think is fabulous because that can be intimidating too. So yay for Brenda for doing that. And I think if, you know, I, I'm thinking that that's exactly where I need to start myself is yeah. if I start with mm -hmm. any kind of video and put it out there, it'll get more comfortable. Have yeah. any of you printed off any of the things that, um, that Amy shared as far as, you know, host coaching, as far as refrigerator sheets, that sort of thing, tweaked it, done something with it. Well, you had two weeks. I guess it's going to have to go on your to-do list for next week. So go back and listen, listen to Amy's um, call again, and pull. She she left many many good things on the website that we can uh, try and tweak for our own. So let's get to it. Okay. Well, this week we are going. To Okay, I, I think just because I'm hearing some background noises, I am going to mute everybody for now because at this point, um, I don't uh, allow parent. Mm, no, I'm not gonna allow you to unmute yourself. So I'm muting you all. I think you're all muted. You can hear me, right? Shake, somebody shake. Okay, good. Um, Okay, so um, this week we are going to be discussing recruiting, and none of you should be afraid to recruit. Uh, it is just having a conversation and chatting with people and sharing information with them about our opportunity. Realize that there is not a perfect thing you can say to someone who's interested and there's absolutely nothing wrong that you can say to a person who is going to sign. What we're trying to do with recruiting and these conversations, oh my family is horrible. They are getting out of the kitchen immediately. Um, <laughs> we're, we're just having conversations with them. We're telling them what we love about our business and what it can do for them, but also finding out what it is that they would like Pampered Chef to do for them. As I said before, the biggest thing we all wonder about is what we can say. So how do you know what to say? It's actually really pretty easy. There is a seven question recruiting flyer and if you printed off the um, the PowerPoints, you already have that, and it's very easy to follow, and I love the fact that we have that. They have talked about these recruiting cards, and I'm sure Jenny and Lori both know of these cards. I have them myself. I've used them myself, and I don't know if you can actually see them in front of the little camera, but I have looked high and low and I cannot find them anywhere on the website. So unfortunately, um, I will have to call home office tomorrow and see if I can um, find out if they're around anymore. Um, they, were, they were pretty slick. Anyways, um, the biggest thing we have to do is we need to ask questions of one sort or another, and then we need to, as Jennifer says, shut up and listen. We have two ears and one mouth, so we need to listen twice as much as we speak. So here is the um, recruiting interview sheet, and I have used this for years and years and years. I always take it with me, or I have it next to me on 
um, if I'm doing it over the phone. I do think the best thing you can do is meet in person with, a, with somebody who's interested so that you can really make a connection with them. Anyways, these questions are really fairly easy and you just need to go through and ask them the questions. I constantly am taking notes. Even when I did the recruiting cards um, and that sort of thing, I constantly had a notebook so that I could write down the answers because what I'm doing with this is I am trying to get to know them, what their why is, so that I can help them down the line. Um, so question number one, tell me what it is about the Pampered Chef that interested you. Write it down. Is it that they love the products and they want more? Is it that they really need to make some extra money because they think they're going to lose their job? Is it that they're stay-at-home moms and they want to get out of the house? Whatever it is, you know, agree with them, reaffirm what they're saying, let them know you know people exactly like them, and that that's a wonderful reason, and you're so glad that they've shown an interest in the Pampered Chef. Question two, you want to know what qualities they have that will make them a great consultant. Some people will say, oh, I love to cook. And if it's like me, if you're like me, you can say, oh, I'm so glad you love to cook, but realize you don't have to love to cook to or to, in order to do this. My husband does all the cooking. But, you know, I love people. I'm outgoing. I'm very, very organized. Whatever they say, again, reaffirm, jot down what they said they think is going to make them a um, great consultant. Now, on question number three, I actually, instead of saying, um, uh, if you look at your calendar in the next uh, six to eight weeks, do you have four to six days that you would leave your home for a few hours to have a pampered chef party? I have squeeze that down and I actually ask him if they have four to six in the next four to six weeks do they have four to six dates that they can um, do shows um, if they say yes I'll say awesome so now are you wanting to do and I just sort of roll through this quite quickly so are you looking to do one show a week or possibly two shows or three shows or maybe even four shows a week and you know, if they go, because if you only say, are you, are you looking to do one show a week? They're going to think, oh, well, one show a week is what I'm supposed to do. Sure, I'll do a show a week. And you don't want to guide them too low. So get them realizing that there are people out there who do five shows a week. I know Jennifer Courtney was saying one of the gals on her team does 10 shows in a week, two shows each day of the week, five days of the week. Um, so anything somebody wants to do, they can do. I also, at that point, after they say, I want to do one show a week, two shows a week, whatever they say, I will ask them what days will work. They might get into the fact that Susie has ballet on Tuesdays and she can't do shows that day. And, I'll, you know, oh, great, but the other days are open. I'll check with them on whether they're thinking they want to do the weekends and that sort of thing. Um, if they say no, that they don't, have time I'll ask him okay so is it just in the next couple of months that you're not going to have the time or is this always going to be a problem slash are they thinking they just want to be a I shouldn't say just but that all they want to do is um, virtual parties and catalog shows but you need to get to know where they're standing there. I also, at this point, I do want to know about their family. I want to know, you know, are you married? What's their name? Do you have children? How old are they? What are their names? What are they into? And by asking those things and getting to know a little bit about other people in their lives, it will help me when I'm talking to them about different people that they could book shows with when they've signed. Because if they've got, you know, a four-year-old in preschool and a second grader and they're involved in swimming lessons and they're involved in soccer well between school soccer and swimming lessons those are three different groups you know depending on what the husband does what they do if they have a job outside so anyways um, I do like to get into that just to know their availability the other thing that I do like to ask and this is part of um, 
uh, number four on the days you and obviously if they don't have children you're not asking this question um, but I would somewhat ask about their husband's feelings about their business you know is your husband gung-ho and on board with you you know doing this type of thing because that's a whole nother battle I, I always wonder if somebody has that problem but it is what it is anyways so you know on the days you have shows do you have someone who can watch your kids and and go into that um, this next question it has changed because we do have more than just a hundred and fifty nine dollar kit and I just sort of have written down on my sheet 109 159 and 249 and I just you know I say okay so it's gonna cost you either 109 $159 or $249 have you thought about which of the kits you would like to get and you know if at this point they have some sort of objection and say well you know I'm I'm kind of wondering how I'm going to get the money for any of them at that point you would might want to have conversations about the possibility of having a, a rummage sale to make some money is there somebody is there you know a parent that might loan you the birth uh, the the money or give you money towards your kit as a birthday present or that sort of thing also mentioning that they could have a show of their own and um, use kit credit 25 or 50 dollars so that could help as well um, then um, all those questions depending on how they respond, are going to tell you how much they've looked into it. Um, backing up a little bit to the cost of the kit, one of the things you need to see to it you're doing is as you're checking people out at your shows, you need to be giving them a um, grab a spoon, life tastes great, life is great, whatever the thing is called, and sending that home with them because, thank you, Jenny, yes, life tastes great, because on the back it shows the kits, it shows the amount of money they can earn and that sort of thing. And all these questions, these three questions, three, four, and five, are gonna give you a, um, a good indication as to just how much they have thought about this um, before you've gotten together with them. Um, then I do also like to ask what type of training they find best for them and I again on my sheet I have written down see hear do it or read it and then depending on whether they say oh I like to see it I like to be able to go through it I like to you know watch videos and that sort of thing I'll say oh well that's great you know the best training you can get is by coming to our team meeting we have team meetings once a week. If they say, oh, well, I like to hear how to do things. Oh, you know, it's great. Our team meetings on the second Monday of every month is a wonderful way to hear different ideas and learn that way. So whatever they say is the way they like to learn. Um, I always encourage them and, and tell them that the team meeting is number one. But then I also do go into having the... Um, the PC University and that sort of thing and the fact that I am here they can call me at any time and that I do have new consultant trainings where we go through different things and one of the things that I'm working on is doing some just work days for half a day at my house on a weekend if people want to learn more about virtual parties and that sort of thing so that there are lots and lots of opportunities um, for learning and they can learn the way they want so then after you've asked those six questions, what I do is I like to recap. And I'll say, just like it says here, Pam, it's clear to me that the Pampered Chef would be a great fit for you. You have many qualities that will help you build your successful business. You know, just the fact that you love to cook, 
that's a great hurdle you don't have to overcome. You have lots of friends, you enjoy people, you feel you have great customer service and connections with people. Those are just great things when you're part of the Pampered Chef business. Um, it's clear to me that you have time to work your business. You know, you've said that Tuesday nights aren't going to work because you've got swimming lessons with one of your kids, but pretty much you're open to any other other days and that you're ready to have at least I'm one to two shows every week. And it's wonderful that you feel you have the support of your family and that you have the money to invest in your in your kit. So my last question is, when do you want your first paycheck? Um, or, uh, you know, when do you think you're going to be ready to start and let them talk? With all these questions, the most important thing for you to do is zip your lips and let them talk. At the bottom of this sheet, and I did go out and listen to Jennifer. There's a YouTube video, video of Jennifer doing her seven question recruiting. And then also, um, I did go into her um, www.tiny.cc slash current consultants. And she has a number of wonderful um, different things that she shares with her team. And since she's shared it with us, we're obviously um, able to use those things. I will also say under PC University, if you go to courses and you go down to recruiting, there are a number of wonderful different audios to listen to. There's different recruiting um, pieces that you can look at and print off for yourself. So there's plenty, plenty, plenty of things that you can use to help you out. Now on, on this card, they are talking about these wonderful interview cards. And I know I have a set. Jen, do you have a set? Okay, Jen has a set. So if you're on Jen's team and you want to see them or possibly use them, I'm sure she'd share them. Um, I don't know if Lori is still on. I know she's got problems with the wonderful Irma. Oh, what am I doing? Didn't mean to do that. Sorry, ladies. Um, with Irma. Um, but I, I would guess that Lori has some cards. I have cards. I'd be more than happy to help you with them. This. Um, I am here, Sarah. Okay. This link that I'm hovering over the, where they're printable cards, it, it goes to you can't find it. However, these, uh, this transcript, that sample script is there, and that might be extremely helpful to you to print that off. Um, again, this card is not going to help you because we don't have those interview cards any longer. So the biggest thing is we don't want you folks freaking out. Remember, it's just a conversation. This is just a friend you're talking to. It's a person you're talking to. You just want to share the information with them and see if it is something that could work for them. So, yep, we are still working on our skills and it's important to always work on our skills and tweak our skills, whether it's that knife I see Chantel whipping around and you're going to take training to learn more about using your knives or whether you're going to work on your skill of um, recruiting. You, you need to tweak it. We'll be talking about that for another couple of weeks as well um, and, and working on that. Uh, your skills are such a major component of your success. The more you tweak your skills, the more you learn about selling, host coaching, booking, recruiting, the better your business is going to be. The bigger your skill, the bigger your check. So, you know, we all want big checks. Not big butts, but we want big checks. So, um, keep working on those skills and and that check will become bigger. I don't remember if I look through you people, I might remember who it was. Somebody who was on in the beginning who was saying that they're struggling a little bit with their, oh, Kelly, it's nice to see you. She's in the hospital. I love you, honey. Hope you're getting some sleep. Um, 
but work, 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 work on your skills and everything will get easier. So, oops, again, um, skills are the easiest of the pillars in our business because it's the one everyone can fix any time they need to by simply practicing your recruiting with a friend. And I will say, don't do it with your family. As you saw, my family is not real helpful. They like to tease me more than anything else. But if you just say to a friend, you know, I'd really like to practice um, my recruiting interview. Would you mind? You never know. They might just sign and join your team. Work on developing your personal stories about your business. That is going to make you a credible person and, and it's going to give you a connection to different people. Uh, you can't study the simple recruiting cards because I don't know where to sh find them. Um, watch and listen to home office trainings. Go to your team meetings and learn from them. Listen to anything you possibly can. Um, go to national conference, go to recipe nights, anything that's available, do those things because they will definitely help. I know at national conference, I was talking to Jane, I can't think of Jane's last name, this is terrible, darling gal, she's, creates wonderful things about the fact that we used to have the tips from the top on Wednesday nights. And I do know that they're looking into getting them back. If Pampered Chef puts Campanegro. No, it wasn't Jan Campanegro. Jane. Not Jan, Jane. Cute. Oh. I don't know. Anyways, um, anything that Pampered Chef puts out there for you, take advantage of it. Uh, because you will love it. I know Jennifer swears by the um, direct sales uh, for dummies book. There are lots of great books. Amy recommended a lot of wonderful authors last week, and I can't agree with her more. There's plenty you can do and read up on. I know that um, since Share is offering trainings from time to time, things are coming across. Um, in Facebook quite a bit on different trainings that different people are offering. Watch YouTube trainings. Oh my gosh, anything from Stacy Itzel and, um, and Sharon Zellen, anybody on, on YouTube would be wonderful to, to watch. Look up Pampered Chef and you'll find lots and lots of things. Do lots of shows because the more shows you do, the better you'll get with sharing at every party skills are easily taught and easily caught and you can do it so i'm going to unmute you we have approximately two minutes left and see if any of you have any questions hey sarah this is jen um you know i was working with dawn's new person today and we we're just kind of talking about you know, adding recruiting to your business, you know, right as a new person, just incorporate it right away. And absolutely could you give, could you give some advice to, to people that maybe, um, I think there's a couple of things that pop into people's heads. First of all, well, what if I'm new and I don't know enough? How can I recruit if I don't know enough? And the other one we discussed was if I recruit somebody and share this business, is that, you know, cut into my bookings? I know that that sometimes comes up in those conversations. So could you give us kind of your take on that? Well, how, how did you deal with it today, Jen? Oh, well, I mean, I, I, I just told her that, I guess, first of all, the part where someone might say, well, I'm really new and you know, I don't have all the answers. I say, well, that's, you know, that's, a, that's to be expected. You know, you are new and um, you certainly can just say there's so much support um, my director you know, is going to be helping us along the way and you know we can kind of learn as we go together just I use the analogy when you join the Y with somebody you know it's more fun to join with a friend and that kind of support each other back and forth so I use that analogy and then um, and I certainly love some other feedback too for from the rest of the folks on the call and then when people maybe are a little hesitant to share because they think 
well, gosh, if, if my best friend becomes a consultant, you know, isn't that going to impact, you know, my, my bookings? Um, I just use the analogy that in Green Bay, there's four shop go stores. There's plenty of business and, you know, you, you're, you're, you definitely are going to be, you know, supporting your friend and her business. And she's got friends and coworkers and relatives that aren't yours. And there's lots of business that she can grow into as well as, you know, your business will be growing alongside her. So um, that was something I shared with Katie today because I think as a new new person, that has to be something that people think, well, geez, if I start somebody in this business, that's going to be some of my bookings, you know? So I, I think that people sometimes are still playing that reel in their head too. And, and I totally agree. One of the things that I've told people <clears throat> that is sometimes a common objection yeah. is, you know, I will just talk about the number of different people in my neighborhood that I have never done a show for as one example. And then the opposite example, the number of people who live within, you know, six to eight blocks of me in Nina that are also directors and are also pampered chef consultants. And we all have different neighbors. We all have different friends. We may have some common um, yep. friends, but we have different. So, and, and the biggest thing that I, I do, encourage and and because there are a number of newer people on this is that I know Carol I know that Lori I know that Amy I know that Jenny I know that Kelly I don't know if I'm missing a director that's on here right now um, but all of us are more than happy to go along on a recruiting interview or do a three-way call with you if you're unsure of doing it and that it's the best way to learn. So somebody has something going on in the background, so if you can mute yourself on your own, that would be great. I'm still hearing a TV or something in the background. So thanks, maybe. though, Jen, for that. Yeah. Mary, Sarah, mute us, and then if somebody wants to maybe raise their hand or something, I don't know if there's anything else. Does anybody have any other questions? Okay. I will go ahead and mute everybody, and we'll move on. Um, we will move on to our homework for this week. Come on. So um, there is an amazing, amazing um, audio that you can download. And it's Brenda Copy and Genevieve Black. And you can go to PC University and go to recruiting. It, this is under um, peer sharing. But you can also just highlight and copy this link. and plink it into your browser and it will download the audio and you can listen to it that way. I listened to it this afternoon and I can listen to a lot of these recordings a number of different times. We will send out, oh, I don't know how I put that blue mark in there. Oh, well. Um, we will send out your homework, um, your slip thing to you, listing everything, and there will be a number of other I have no idea how I have that blue line through there. Uh, we will have another, a number of other audios that you can listen to. And the more you listen to, the better off you're going to be. So as well as listening to that audio, you're going to want to be ready to tell your, um, your recruiter slash your director how many shows you're going to commit to booking this week how many host coaching calls you're going to commit to do this week. You're going to set up your call with your recruiter to discuss all these things. Um, and then they're going to want to talk to you about your leads. And, and Amy did a great job with the host coaching again last week and ideas of ways you can keep track of things. But work on your leads and, and do are you doing the ticket game? Sharon Zellen does the ticket game and there are wonderful YouTubes on that. Kelly, right here on this call, does the, I don't remember what it's called, but for lack of a better name, it's a cards thing that she does with people. And somewhere, do you have a recording of that from the retreat we were at, Kelly? Could you post that to the group? Awesome. I am also going to post um, 
because one of the things we always need to have is our 30 minute commercial, our 20 minute commercial. And Amy shared with the directors a wonderful, wonderful um, audio thing about putting together the words that you can use when you're talking at your show, when you're talking to people. And I am going to post that. And if I can't figure out how to do that, I'm going to be asking Amy to post it for me on the six weeks to success. And, you know, take the time to go ahead and do that. Um, also, we're going to want to know how many bookings you got this week, where your sales, um, what your sales were, what are you having trouble with, and don't be afraid to brag about yourself. You need to be nice to yourself and let us know something wonderful that you have done. So, is there anybody else who has any questions? We are over by six minutes. I don't like that. You could raise your hand and I could unmute you. Otherwise, thank you, thank you, thank you for being on the call. Merci, gracias. Danke Shen, all those things. Have a great week. And I don't know who's our fifth call for next week, but I know it will be amazing. Thanks, folks.